Hey guys, my name is Angie Johnson. I'm the state manager for Bench Africa and I look after Queensland, Northern New South Wales and the Northern Territory. Today in the Bench Kitchen, I'm calling all vegans and vegetarians. We have a dish just for you, but don't worry, even if you're a meat eater, give it a shot. I'm sure you'll absolutely love it. We're making a dish called Bunny Chow and this is actually from South Africa. It's like the Australians have kebabs, South Africans have Bunny Chow. It's absolutely delicious, definitely give it a go. South Africa as a country actually has so many options for travelers. It's not just about animals. And I always say to people, South Africa is great if you want animals plus. So you've got Africa plus history with Robben Island off the coast of Cape Town where Nelson Mandela was jailed for 18 years of his 27 year sentence. Also in Cape Town, your wine connoisseurs are gonna be so happy. There's wineries all around the area, which is absolutely beautiful landscapes. And there's some of the best restaurants in the world to keep the foodies happy as well. Along the southern coast of South Africa, you've got the garden route. It's filled with beautiful scenery and landscapes, golden beaches, rainforests, absolutely stunning. Then of course is Kruger National Park, which is one of the most famous national parks in the world. That's where you can go and see your big five and all the game that's there as well. It's absolutely stunning, so go and have a look at it. But let's get into this. I'm gonna teach you how to make bunny chow. Alrighty, what you're gonna need for this dish, based on vegetarian and vegan options, you're in my kitchen, surprise, surprise, we're starting with olive oil and some salt and pepper. Now we've got two diced carrots and one tin of chickpeas that I've just rinsed and strained, and then one brown onion that I've just diced up as well. Half a head of cauliflower that I've cut up into little florets so they're in bite-sized pieces, and four medium potatoes that I've diced up into one to 1.5 centimeter chunks. Then we've got turmeric, we need one tablespoon of turmeric, one tablespoon of curry powder, one tablespoon of paprika, one tablespoon of veggie stock. That's what I love about this recipe. It's just one, 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 super easy. And a tin of diced tomatoes. Now you guys know I love my chili. I've got one long mild chili here for the flavor because I don't really want the punch. I just want the flavor of it. And we've got one tablespoon of minced ginger. Now, as always, double every garlic recipe. That's my rule of thumb, but don't double my recipes because I've already done it for you. So we've got six cloves of garlic that are finely minced there as well, and one bunch of coriander. Finely slice up the coriander, leaves in one area and the stems in another because there's so much flavor in the stems and we're gonna use those at another time. Now, we're also gonna need some curry leaves. About these, if you don't wanna go and buy fresh curry leaves, you can get them at any supermarket in the fresh food section with all the herbs. If you don't wanna buy them, that's fine. Double the curry powder amount. However, the flavor is different. We're gonna need about four to five leaves, but please don't once you actually buy them, they last pretty much, well, almost forever. So it's really, really easy. Just pick off a leaf and then you can actually put it in a Tupperware container and freeze them for up to a year. So you can literally skin the whole branch and keep these for ages. So it is a good investment to have. And then you're also going to need some fresh bread crusty rolls. Um, so I've just grabbed six because this is gonna be enough for six people. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is get a big pot, put a good drizzle, about four to five tablespoons of olive oil and get that heated up. Now once we're there, we're gonna put a tablespoon of turmeric in, alrighty. And then we've got a tablespoon of curry powder, or two heaped teaspoons if you're doing it by I like I am. Two teaspoons of paprika, or a tablespoon. All of that ginger. And the plan is we actually need to fry up these spices. I've got six curry leaves, but like I said, if you're not using curry leaves, just double the curry powder. Then we've got all of that beautiful garlic. You guys know how much I love my garlic. And also the chili. We're gonna pop all that in there and cook it off so that the spices start to become really, really beautiful to smell because that's when we're gonna start adding our vegetables. Alrighty, so I've cooked that off. It only takes about a minute or so and you'll get this thick curry paste. So that's what we're gonna get started. So from here, we're then going to add our onions and fry those off until they go translucent. So probably another three to four minutes. So now that the onions have been cooking off for about three to four minutes, it will probably stick to the bottom of the pan. That's completely fine because it will come up as we cook it off. But you can see those onions has just started to become translucent. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells amazing. So from there, we're gonna add that tin of diced tomatoes. Give that a good stir. We're also adding the stalks of the coriander. Now, please make sure you don't throw those out because there's so much flavor in there. We're also going to add a teaspoon of vegetable stock. If you're using chicken in your recipe, you can definitely use chicken stock, beef stock. I uh, 
uh, prefer veggie, so just use that. See, look, at it's already starting to come off the pot, but look at those colours. Then we're also going to season it really well with some salt and pepper. And then we're going to cook this off for about another three minutes. Now we want to start adding our veggies. So we've got the potatoes that we've diced up, put those in there. Also the cauliflower and the carrot. If you're going to be use chicken, using chicken or beef, that's when you pop that in. And we're going to give it a good stir and covering all those vegetables with the curry sauce. Now, don't worry about it if you don't get every single inch of the vegetables covered. That's completely fine because now what we're going to do once we've given it a good stir. Now, also, please note, I haven't put the chickpeas in yet because they're not going to take very long to cook and I don't want them to turn into mush. Then we're going to add some water. Now, you want to about half fill the pot with water and we're going to put that on a medium heat so it's in a gentle simmer and let it cook with the lid on for about half an hour so we can get those vegetables to start cooking. But let's come back then. Now that they've been cooking on medium heat for about half an hour, we're just gonna take the lid off and cook it on that medium heat again for about another 20 minutes to 30 minutes because we want some of the liquid to actually absorb. Make sure you are stirring it occasionally because we don't want anything to stick to the bottom. So we're gonna leave it like this for a bit and come back soon. So while that's cooking, let's get the bread rolls ready. Carefully with a knife, just create a circle. Make sure you're careful. We want all 10 fingers after this cooking situation and pop it out and they are ready to go. Okay, that's been cooking without a lid for about 20 minutes. So now what we're going to do is add coriander, but as always keep a little pinch to the side for decoration. Then we're also going to add our chickpeas and we're gonna give that a really good stir. You can see how much of the actual liquid has been absorbed. So don't worry about if you're thinking it's a bit too liquidy at the start, it will go away. But our stew is almost ready. We're gonna put that back on a medium heat for the chickpeas to cook off for about 10 minutes. And while they're cooking, we're gonna put the bread rolls in the oven to heat up and get a bit crunchy for 10 minutes as well. And we'll come back. So we've had that cook off for another 10 minutes. And as you can see, all that excess liquid has been absorbed. It smells absolutely amazing. We've toasted the bread rolls for around 10 minutes. Now it's as simple as scooping that beautiful bunny chow stew into the bread rolls like so. The amounts that I've given you would probably do around six bread rolls quite easily. So please know this will feed about six people. Serve them, and you know, guys, I love a good garnish. So with some coriander on top, and then it's as easy as digging in. So there you have it, guys. Traditional South African bunny chow. The absolute perfect comfort food, especially with the weather outside getting quite cold. Give the recipe a try and let us know what you think. If there's any other dishes from around Africa that you'd really love to learn how to make, just let us know and we'll show you how it's done. I'm Angie. Bye from the Bench Kitchen. Yeah. <sighs>